Hey, it's Maddie. And it's Caressa. You're not watching the Disney Channel right now. You're listening to Dreadfully, Dreadfully Twisted. And we're back. We are back. We are sorry for the hiatus. Life gets in the way. Life gets in the way. <laughs> it really does. I really don't. I just accidentally muted myself. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't understand how people can do things. I know. We're like, we're going to put on an episode every week. And we're going to, we have like a whole schedule plan. And then it just totally goes down and the something train. something happens. And we're just like, ah. Uh. <laughs> one of us has a headache or one of us has to do something. and uh, Or one of us is depressed because, <laughs> because life. Because <laughs> life, you know. <laughs> oh. But we're here. We are here. We are back. We have missed you. And we will we will do better. Yes, we will. Starting we promise. Now, <laughs> we're going to try to record at least yes. once a week. Yes. It, we'll pick a day, and if that day doesn't work, then we're going to have a backup day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is our early New Year's resolution. It's yes. happening. <laughs> Halloween resolution. Has Halloween resolution. Exactly. Since Halloween was like two days ago. <laughs> Happy Halloween, everybody. Yes. Happy Late Halloween. Halloween. Halloween's not over for me, though. Yeah. Halloween... It's Halloween until Thanksgiving for yes, me. Yes, yes. And then I could think about Christmas <laughs> after that. My people at work already started decorating for Christmas on November 1st. And I was like, Ooh. oh, no. I heard Christmas music today. I was like, oh, it's too I'm, early for I'm this. I'm not ready. Like, Definitely just, not. Like, in general, I'm just not ready for Christmas. Nope. It's not going to be the same without my grandma. No. So I'm just like, can we just not do Christmas? Exactly. Can we just have a second Halloween? <laughs> yep. <laughs> exactly. Let's just skip Let's it. Let's have a Halloween party during Christmas time. Oh, my God, Yes. <laughs> planned we're gonna have a spooky movie night oh, we're, yes. gonna, we're gonna bake halloween cookies yes and do halloween things yes so we can <laughs> paint pumpkins and everything <laughs> merry I, halloween everybody <laughs> merry halloween. oh my god i should make a shirt that says merry yes. halloween with like a pumpkin with a christmas tree in it or something <laughs> perfect I'm like imagine perfect it. and it's gonna be green and orange yes <laughs> i love it <laughs> Oh, okay. Merry Halloween. Merry Halloween. Because <laughs> I don't know. I'm just like not ready for Christmas. Oh, same. It's like, I don't want to. I didn't have enough of Halloween. <laughs> yes, it went by way too fast. It did. And I'm like, I didn't do anything I wanted to do. I didn't go I know. I wanted to go haunted, haunted houses. houses. <laughs> <laughs> I watched like two scary movies. Yeah. <laughs> like, I didn't do enough. Well, we can watch scary movies all year round. Uh, well, we're watching Five Nights of Freddy. Yeah. Five, I say Five Nights of Freddy. <laughs> It's Five Nights at Freddy's. <laughs> I've always done that. I don't know why. I'm like, I'm saying this completely wrong. <laughs> and then Jeremy doesn't even correct me. He just looks at me. He's like, mm? And I'm like, you're supposed to correct me. He just goes with it. <laughs> I know I'm saying it wrong. I don't know why. Is that like a Mandela effect? <laughs> I think so. Because like, Probably. I thought it was Five Nights of Freddy's. That makes more sense. At, well, I guess Five Nights at Freddy's makes more sense because it is like Freddy's it's arcade. A thing, yeah. Yeah. Pizzeria. But yeah, so we're watching that after we're done recording this. Yeah. So I'm excited. Yay! Because I've been Spooky wanting to movie. watch it. <laughs> we'll let you know how that is. Yes. <laughs> it's probably really good. Yeah. I'm expecting it to be good. Yeah, me too. <laughs> so this week, I have a double feature for us. Ooh. Um, Just because one of these, I couldn't find too much about like the early life, so I was let me just make that up with another story. <laughs> so I did two. Um, one of these was suggested by my high school BFF. Shout out to Ari. Love Hi. you and miss you. <laughs> um, thank you for the suggestion. Yes, thank you for the suggestion. Um, so the second story, you guys might want to skip if you... So, okay, you guys are going to know as soon as I say this, but... I told myself that I was never going to cover a case that involved babies. Oh. Yeah. Because I love babies. It, yeah. it just, it, it literally makes me cry every time I hear something about it. Like, I just always skip those videos. I never want to even, like, hear about it. Like, if I hear, like, one of those cases, I don't want to hear it. Yeah, it's like, like, oh, no, I'm just going to yeah. skip this. Because, like, babies and animals. animals. Yep. Babies and animals. Are the two things that I cannot physically. Same. 
understand Same. or physically hear because it rips my heart Same. out of my chest. And I'm like, I just want to be a puddle and cry. Right <laughs> exactly. <now." laughs> exactly. Because they're both innocent. I know. They're so innocent. They didn't do anything. I know. And yeah, the second one, I just felt like I just really need... I, I heard this and like this was the only case of like young to like babies, you know, that I heard like that I absolutely had to cover because I heard this and I was like... This is possibly, like, one of the worst serial killers that I have heard of in my life. Like, I feel like, and I have never heard of them before. So that is so weird to me that, like, it's not, like, as known Mm -hmm. as, like, you know, because, like, that's, like, it's just crazy. Just you guys, yeah. But I'll let you know whenever that starts. So if you want to skip that one, you can because it is pretty heart-wrenching. I don't know if you've never heard of it. I might have never heard of it. Yeah, yeah. You might have, the, I don't know. The podcast I listen to, the main one I listen to, they don't talk about children. Yeah. But um It's like it's um very old case. Okay, yeah, I probably don't know what it is. Like eighteen hundred. Hmm. Does it involve an axe? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, I don't want to hear about that one. I'm gonna cry. Oh, <laughs> uh, the Vizalisca Vis- axe murders. Oh, I have, oh. a, I have a book on that that my friend Emily got me for yeah. my birthday, and it's sitting over there, and I know about the case, Yeah, I was going to read the book oh and God. do research, but it's very It is, hard, yeah. So. I totally forgot about that one. Oh, oh and oh FYI, God. I'm probably not going to edit this because <laughs> <laughs> I suck <laughs> in time, you know? So if we say anything wrong or yeah. something just doesn't sound right, sorry. Sorry. I might not edit this, depending <laughs> how I feel later. <laughs> because i want to like upload this for tonight yeah or tomorrow so i might not have time so yeah i might just add the music and just go, and go with it like <laughs> go i with did the, the last like three yeah times. <laughs> and it still sounded good so yeah. <laughs> honestly when i write edit i don't even listen to the full thing i just like skip <laughs> yeah parts i know that i need to edit out because uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sometimes i'm terrible but uh i'm sorry go ahead. no that's okay okay so get started this first story is so this is like kind of what people call him and there's also a movie called this about him um the sinister minister i don't know if you've ever heard of that no it's actually he's actually from pennsylvania yeah oh is that like a scary movie (laughs) Oh no! This is the case. Yeah, I, I, I was like, "Is that what the movie's called?" <laughs> no, the movie is called Sinister Minister about him, oh, but okay. it's like it's like a lifetime movie or something, like based on the uh, story. So it's like a kind of like a documentary, but not a documentary. Yeah, it's like it's like a movie just with like fake characters, basically, kind uh, of acting out what happened, pretty much. Okay, okay, okay. I, I get it now. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. I might um, have to watch this movie. Yeah, you should. Later. It's good. I'll send it to you. Um, Arthur Burton Shermer, also known as A.B., to many who know him, was a pastor of the United Methodist Church. Arthur has been married twice, and him and his second wife, Betty, lived in the residence next to the church. Shermer was a very good speaker and had a magnetism that had served him well in his life. It was his charm, along with his religious authority, that insulated him time and time again from anyone who might have seen his deceptions. Arthur's first wife, Jewel Shermer, died at age 50 on April 24, 1999. Shermer said that he came home on April 23, 1999 to find Jewel laying at the bottom of the steps and bleeding from the head. She died the next day as a result of a traumatic brain injury from the alleged fall down the stairs. However, this would not be the only freak accident. In the death of his second wife, he said he was driving Betty to the Pocono Medical Center on July 15, 2008, when she woke up complaining of jaw pain and she had removed her seatbelt to get comfortable. He claimed a deer ran into the road and he swerved to avoid it, crashing into the guardrail and causing Betty to hit her head against the windshield. Police later said the damage to the car was too minor to have caused an injury that produced as much blood as the paramedics found in the car. Prosecutors say he bludgeoned his wife on the head with a crowbar, then loaded her into the car and staged a low sp- and staged a low speed accident in effort to conceal the crime. What? Yeah. Um also I have a video 
about them talking about Betty. Okay. Um, about like the whole seatbelt thing. So I'm gonna play that in a second. But but okay, <laughs> if you're if you're gonna okay, this is just th- theoretical. I'm not siding with him at all. But I'm saying if you're going to try to fake an accident, why don't you make it look like an actual accident? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'd be like, oh, I hit a deer, and I got, like, a little dent in my car, and now she's dead. <laughs> what? How stupid are you? <laughs> what is wrong with you? <laughs> what is wrong with you? And why, if you if you don't want to be with her anymore, just, just get a divorce. <laughs> just get don't a divorce. Exactly. What? Because what is wrong with you? you? Like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> what is wrong with you? And I wonder if the first one, she fell on the stairs. Yeah probably pushed her down Mm -hmm. the stairs it was like i'm done with you and the fact that they both of the injuries were so similar i talk about but oh so okay okay yeah i I, I get it oh okay here's the video as things unfolded we're hearing different versions about why Betty Shermer wasn't wearing her seatbelt. The Reverend had a problem with that part of the story. And even the family at the hospital, when they when they received the terrible news and they all gathered around the bedside, why don't you have her seatbelt on? And he changed the story multiple times about that. Some ridiculous versions, too. At alternating times, he said, oh, she... She was playing this game to see whether or not her seatbelt would beep, or she just didn't put her seatbelt on at all. It was really strange because her family insisted she would always wear her seatbelt. Her family was adamant that she was one of those people who would sit and wait until everyone was belted in before she would ever drive and would never get in a car and not immediately uh, seatbelt herself. So they were more than happy to reach out to us once they realized there was some sort of um, investigation going. So would somebody who would wait for their family to put their seatbelts on really not have their seatbelt on? Yeah, and <laughs> who in the right mind would be like, oh, let me play a game with my seatbelt to make yeah. sure that it's working. Let me see if this beeps. What? <laughs> While you're driving. Like, even whenever it's like with me, with any of my friends, like my one friend... She doesn't wear her seatbelt when she's in the car. I'm like, mm-hmm. you're putting your seatbelt on right yep, now. Like, yep. you are wearing that seatbelt. I always make sure everyone has their seatbelt on. I'm like, put your seatbelt on. But, like, <laughs> especially if, like, she would not not have her seatbelt on. Yeah. And the fact that, like, everybody said that she always exactly. wore her seatbelt and made sure everybody else had it on, too. So why would you even try to make up that lie when you know exactly. she's going to get, like, pushed back in your face? What is wrong with him? What is wrong with you? <laughs> I don't like this guy. He was like in that video, it yeah. showed his face, and I was like, "Oh, he's creepy." <laughs> and then whenever it showed Betty, I was like, "Oh, she's so pretty." Oh, poor Betty. <laughs> Shermer has long denied having any involvement with either of his wife's deaths in 1999 and 2008. Of course, he would. Of say course, that. <laughs> of course. Well, I didn't kill them because I don't want to go to jail, even though I killed them. <laughs> he died of natural causes. Yeah. Wink. Natural causes of being bludgeoned to death in the head. <laughs> yeah. Nothing natural about that, buddy. Uh, I hate this guy. (laughs) Police claim that Shermer cheated on his first wife, Jewel, throughout their marriage with woman with woman in his congregation at Readers United Methodist Church in Jackson Township, Pennsylvania. I don't understand people who cheat. Yeah. If you don't want to be with the person, leave them. Exactly. And if you don't love them enough to not do that, leave them. Exactly. Because this is a terrible man. <laughs> I hate this guy. When it couldn't get worse. Oh. <laughs> <clears throat> Police also understandably stated, quote, We find it particularly disturbing and difficult to believe that both of A.B. Shermer's wives could have suffered such horrific injuries by accident. End quote. Agreed. Because <laughs> it wasn't an accident. It, exactly. They were staged to be acts. The grand jury's report stated, quote, to the contrary, we believe probable cause exists to believe that neither woman died from an accident, end quote. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A series of events that year made investigators suspicious of Shermer and the story he told about how Betty died. One of Shermer's 
parishioners took his own life, claiming Arthur was having an affair with his wife. Yeah. Okay, so you're not only going to kill both of your wives, cheat on the first one, but then you're going to do that to somebody you know and cheat and have their wife, like, theoretically, like, if she did cheat on him. Yeah. And then he killed himself. You're such a bad like, person. He, now he has that on his hands, too. Because... Yeah. What is wrong with you? Keep it in your pants. <laughs> exactly. Is it that hard? <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> oh. oh, that's that's funny. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> like, don't do that. Don't make <laughs> don't somebody do else cheat on their. I mean, he didn't make her. I mean, she if she did that, mm-hmm. it's also on her too. But like. Again, if you don't want to be with your husband and you like this other guy, exactly. leave your husband. Don't cheat on them. That's just going to be so much worse than just leaving them. Exactly. <sighs> in March 2013, in Monroe County at age 64, Shermer was sentenced to life in prison without parole in the 2008 death of his second wife, Betty Shermer. After he was charged, authorities reopened the investigation of his first wife, Joel. In September 2014, while already serving life, he was sentenced to an extra 20 to 40 years in the 1999 death of his first wife. Which, I totally think he should have got a lot more, but I mean, he's already serving life, so he's probably going to be dead at that point. But oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, he's, he was 64 then, so. Um, I don't know why they but despite his no contest plea Shermer continues to deny killing Joel Shermer and his two daughters with Joel both told the judge they believed in their father's innocence I can't believe that that is like one thing that I am like totally shocked about how can her kids believe him over like their mom is dead I mean like <laughs> that's crazy that he could he convinced them uh, like, yeah, uh, the wow. brainwashing, it happens. You can make Crazy. people believe anything if you brainwash them. Crazy. Now, did they find, like, evidence to link him to these? Um, there was, like, actual... I mean, there was, like, enough evidence, yes, but... <laughs> I was just wondering, because yeah. I'm just like, I wonder how, like, <clears throat> they were able to, like, catch him on it and, like, yeah. sentence him to life in prison. Either way, good thing, because he's a terrible person. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like him. He doesn't give me good vibes. No, <laughs> no good vibes. But yeah, there's like still a thing, like, people were like, was it an accident, suicide, or murder? Still, to this day, you know. Okay, let me just bludgeon myself to death. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because you're going to commit suicide in that way. Exactly. Oh, let me just take a hammer and just hit my head, like, my head in until I, like, die. But by that point, you're going to be passed out anyway, so you're probably, like, I don't know, like, <laughs> oh, my. Oh, okay. So, <clears throat> I looked it up, and it says here, um, authorities finally came to the conclusion that Betty Shermer's severe head and brain injuries could not have been caused by a minor accident. They also found her blood on the garage floor of the house that she shared with her husband, and that somebody had tried to clean the mess up. Um... And then it's movie it was the same. Yeah. They said there was like way too much blood for it to be Yeah. Minor of an injury. And Joel Shermer's death was never entirely clear. Her autopsy revealed that she suffered a traumatic brain injury, mm. had a fractured skull, and in, had impact injuries to her upper body. But her cause of death was ruled undetermined. That's probably why they only gave and that's right. probably why that um, they were able to get him on the first one because they found yeah. blood in his home. Yep. So if they, fi- they find blood in your home, yeah, okay, you killed <laughs> yeah. her because that happened before the exactly. quote-unquote accident. <laughs> wow. I'll have to watch that movie. Yeah, it, it was pretty good. That, that's interesting. Arthur told the judge, quote, I was not the best husband or the best father or the best pastor, but I am not a murderer, end quote. Um, okay. <laughs> if you weren't, I don't think we would be making this case. But um, yeah. yeah, talking about this case. 
not making it. We didn't make this. Oh no, we, <laughs> we did not, not we make this happen. Did not no. Happen. <laughs> <laughs> but um, okay. You can still be a guess. Did he say he wasn't a good father, or he was a good? Father? No, he said I wasn't the best father, or the best pastor, or the best. Husband. We know you weren't the best husband. Yeah, <laughs> definitely you're, know that. <laughs> you're definitely not a good person at all. Or are you the best father because you told your kids with Jewel that the complete opposite of what happened, so and they believe you for it. So I guess, you know. I don't like him. <laughs> he also said that he would rather stand before God because he knows perfectly my actions and my innocence. End quote. But the judge and Shermer would remain in prison for the rest of his life and stated, quote, only two people know what happened. You and your wife, I believe you are fully responsible, end quote. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think he was fully responsible. Yeah. Arthur is still serving life in the Green State Correctional Institute in Waynesburg, Green County, Pennsylvania. Oh, that's not that far. Yeah. That's like, that county is like right next to the county mm. that I work in. It's just, uh, this case just, wow. <laughs> I don't like this guy. It's just, this case was just boggled my mind a little bit. I feel bad for Betty and Jewel. I know. They didn't deserve that. They, they just married a horrible, horrible man. They did. That just sucks. I feel bad for them. Yeah, poor kids, too. I know, the kids are so brainwashed. They're yeah. like, he didn't kill her. <laughs> Even though he entirely did. Yeah. <laughs> I-, I can't stand parents who brainwash their kids like that. I know. It's like three. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was it for that one. The next one is going to be the harder one to listen to so if you do not want to hear about you know i mean obviously i didn't want to hear about this either but i did so i have to share (laughs) it with you guys you guys can skip (laughs) i'm stuck here (laughs) (laughs) you guys can skip now um here is your here's your cue okay (laughs) and if you are skipping we'll see you next week we'll see you next week love you (laughs) (laughs) okay so this next story is about a baby farmer I know you probably, you're probably like, what is that? That sounds like, what even is I that? I literally thought WTF in my head. Yeah. I was like, WTF, yeah. what? When I heard that, I was like, what? what? That's a, that was a thing? I was just like, what? <laughs> okay. So this is about Amelia Dyer. I don't know if you, Al- Amelia, Amelia Elizabeth Dyer, her name. No, I never heard of that name. Amelia Dyer is known as one of the most infamous and sickening killers in history. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. So it was a woman who did this. Yeah. Oh, God. In the span of two decades, she had murdered hundreds of infants while they were under her care. Amelia Dyer was born in 1836, and when she reached the age of 22, both her mother and father had died. Her oldest brother took over the family shoemaking business, and for some reason, Amelia became estranged from her family, which left her with no financial support, and she had no legal rights to the business. A couple years later, at age 24, she married a man named George Thomas, who was 59. Amelia also had two children of her own. After Amelia got married, her husband helped her get into a nursing school, and she began her training as a nurse and midwife. While Amelia was there, she met a woman, and this woman introduced her to baby farming. And this is when the story gets crazy. What is wrong with you? Baby form here here's what baby farming is. Okay. Baby farming is the historical practice of gaining custody of an infant or child in exchange for payment. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So you're just taking in children to get money? Yeah, pretty much. This happened in late Victorian era Britain in particular. Okay. <clears throat> Sometimes the money was given as a lump sum or increments over a small period of time. Sadly, midwives could take advantage of single women to make money off their unfortunate circumstances that they were in. For a brief time, Amelia owned and ran her own boarding school for pregnant women who were single. Amelia would help them with the delivery of their child, and they would pay her to take custody of their children. Putting out ads, she promised she was a respectable and married woman that would provide a happy and healthy life for their unwanted children. It said that she came across a well. It said that she came across as a well-mannered and well-spoken woman. 
This charade was enough to fool people, and it led a growing it led to a growing number of infants under her care. A lot of women left the boarding house with little care for the fate of their children, although some would write to Amelia to see how their child was doing. Amelia would hardly ever reply. Yeah, that's a red flag. <laughs> yeah, that is because like if she doesn't reply, what happened to you? Exactly. Your child? Um I mean, I know you didn't want them, but I don't think you would want them to yeah, be murdered. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and the fact that like like they're writing to know how they're doing and they don't answer like what what would you think? And like how can Okay, she has two kids of her own. Exactly. How the heck can you sit there and kill babies when you have two kids of your exactly. own? Exactly. And I'm really surprised this this was a woman because women yeah have i know instincts. yeah like i see a baby i'm like i'll protect it at all costs yeah <laughs> but then like it's funny because like a lot of crimes are not women like even yeah. still i mean like obviously you could find a lot of them but like not as many as men like even like back in the day too but like i did find a good bit of like mostly i've heard like poisoning stories because they used to have like a bunch of you know yeah different kind of like medicines and stuff poisons and yeah i know about like a, one case where this woman was poisoning people with aqua tofana oh yeah yeah i think you told me about that. yeah that's like the only one that i really yeah. was like no but this one like yeah <laughs> what is wrong with you what is wrong with you why Seriously? are you such a terrible woman why are you a terrible person <laughs> once the women left and the children were in her custody, Amelia would let the child die from starvation and neglect. What is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? How can you do that to a poor little innocent baby know. who can't help itself? You have exactly. to take care of it. Are you really that messed up in the head that you're just going to be like, oh, yeah, I'm not going to feed you. I'm gonna just going to neglect you and let you die. And like, what obviously, you, you know, like, the babies are starving, so they would be screaming. Well, here's what happens. Oh, no. <laughs> okay <laughs> i'm not ready no. <laughs> me either <laughs> i was not ready when i heard this either <laughs> ah okay with all the crying children she gave them something called mother's friend which was an opium-based syrup this would keep the children quiet as they slowly starved to death okay so you drug them yeah i hate this woman me too <laughs> i think i hate her more than arthur me too me too she's on top she's really <laughs> this woman really took the cake didn't she <laughs> i hate her hate her absolutely hate her despise even you do that and like just thinking of a baby taking what was it Ugh. opium you said yeah opium syrup that like, alone probably would kill that baby yeah, if they, if they gave them enough of it, they're definitely... Because yeah. their bodies can't handle it. They're too small yeah. and fragile. So sad. I mean, I guess it's like the peaceful way to go, but... Yeah. Still, why, Still. why would you do this? What is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? I hate you. <laughs> Me Amelia. too. We hate you, Amelia. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys would have just seen the face I just made. <laughs> it was hilarious. I saw it. <laughs> once a child passed away amelia would get a doctor to examine the corpse and take the body away doctors began to came okay we're gonna start that sentence over <laughs> doctors began to become suspicious of the number of infants that died in her care and if she noticed the doctors becoming suspicious she would simply move away to a new town or she would have a mental breakdown so she would be put into an insane asylum what <laughs> yeah yeah so okay the doctors become suspicious okay how many children have to die for them to become suspicious exactly i mean i'd and... probably be suspicious on child two yeah but that's just me and like <laughs> okay and then she was like oh i'm just insane put me in a insane yeah. asylum that's that's like, gonna that should last you forever yeah you should be stuck in there for the rest of your you life i think so <laughs> like let me just fake a mental breakdown so they take me away is wrong with you D like are you just gonna ex escape the mental asylum <laughs> i guess so because <laughs> like how are you gonna go back to doing what you were doing before and wouldn't it be hard to go to a new city just to restart everything yeah unless she just didn't like get comfortable 
knowing that she was gonna have to leave like what is wrong with you what makes you do this like what kind of yeah. like, mental disorder do you have to have to do this to children and to be like that messed up to be like oh i'm just gonna move away seriously I'm gonna move away and do this again and that lady who introduced her to baby farming why screw you <laughs> yeah what's wrong with what you? is wrong with you i want to know about you exactly why you got into it because you don't want to make money for yourself exactly you just want to take the easy way out what is wrong with you both I don't like either of you. Me either. I don't know your name, but I don't like you. Lady. Lady. <laughs> Lady with no name. Lady with no name. <laughs> I don't like you. <laughs> Every time she moved to a new town or city, she changed her name to avoid being found. In 1879, a doctor that Amelia had called to certify the death of a child became suspicious. After a brief investigation... They ruled that Amelia was guilty of neglect, and she served six months of hard, intensive labor. Six months of okay. labor. Again, what? Okay, I, I killed children. Like she killed children. Yeah. And oh, we're just gonna send you six months of, of hard. Oh, work. you neglected a ton of children. Here's some community yeah, service. But even if it was just one child that you neglected, literally, you still shouldn't like get community service. You should go to jail. Exactly. Exactly. That doesn't even make any sense. Oh my gosh. I, I just want to yell at the, what do you call it? Universe? The system. No. <laughs> no, like the, I was like, the, the universe? system back then. The whole, the whole. <laughs> I mean, the system now is still messed up. Yeah, exactly. It is. <laughs> so. <laughs> but back then, it must have been real messed up because like, oh, what okay. is wrong with you? You're, you're killing babies. Uh, you're just going to go pick up some trash on the side of the road. Well, that's like Jeffrey Dahmer. Those cops were like totally ignoring the fact that it smelled like rotting flesh in his room. Yep. What is wrong with them? Like, you, you wouldn't know something is wrong. Yeah. Oh, it's just my fridge is broken. Oh, my God. Your fr- <laughs> if your fridge was broken, it wouldn't smell that exactly. bad. <laughs> oh. Did you, oh, you got to watch that show. Dahmer. Yeah. I started watching oh it. I need to finish it. It was really good. <laughs> it was actually really good. Yeah. It was just. Dis- I mean, it's obviously, disturbing. it's disturbing because the whole. St- He's disturbing. He was disturbing. Still is disturbing. Forever will be. Was <laughs> forever will be disturbing. Him, Ted Bundy. <laughs> exactly. All them psychos. What is wrong with you all? With y'all. Wait, well, when was Amelia's birthday? Um, 1836. 1836? Does it say a month? No. Oh, yeah, probably wouldn't because it was like- Yeah. In the 1800s i was just wondering because i was like i wonder what kind of <laughs> zodiac sign she is <laughs> i hope it's not the same as mine because i promise i don't associate with her <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i do not want to ass- i will change my sign <laughs> i'm gonna look it up just because i'm curious <laughs> you can go ahead okay amelia did her sentence and she was released after this she continued her murderous baby forming career of course. Only this time, she no longer would notify a doctor to remove the corpse. Oh my god, she's ugly. <laughs> Is that her? It says a different name. Yeah. That's- oh my god, I think that's she's her. ugly. She is. <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean to like put people down like that, but this picture of her, she looks like a She was a terrible she person. She looks like the Wicked Witch of the West. <laughs> Like she does. She has like a huge nose. She's like well scrunching like, her eyebrows. She's like, I'm mad. That's like Joe Metheny. I can never like forget him. He's terrifying. He's absolutely disgusting <laughs> looking. Like I mean as a person, yeah, but just looking at him is the stuff of nightmares. I'm trying to find her birthday. It doesn't say a birthday. No. From eighteen eighty onwards, she would deal with the bodies of the children that she killed herself. She then came to the realization that if she killed the infant herself within hours of getting the child in her custody, she would be able to get more profit. So she killed the children right after she yeah, got Yeah, pretty them? much. That's like what she came to the conclusion of. Okay, so That's- how did she get the money? Did she like, she, she got the baby. And they would pay her over time or they would just give her all the money at once. Okay, so it's kind of like, okay, here's my child. I'm going to give you my child, and then I'm going to pretty much pay you, like, child support. Yeah, pretty much. For, it's, and it's, like, for the child, but you're yeah. just going to take it for yourself and then kill the child. Yeah. 
I hate this lady. <laughs> Me too. I, I'm not. I'm not sad. I called her ugly. No, definitely not. You're disgusting. Ugly on the inside and the outside. Amelia, we're disgusting. Yeah, it just says eighteen thirty six. It doesn't say like an actual. I was just curious because, like, it doesn't say. Okay, you can keep going. Sorry, <laughs> it's okay. I was just looking <laughs> up stuff. <laughs> <laughs> She continued to move around the city and use many different names. Her plan was within hours of acquiring a new infant, she would strangle them using dressmaking tape. <laughs> yeah. It's just going to continue to get worse. Yeah. She later confessed that she enjoyed watching the children suffer. When the children were dead, she would wrap them in cotton or paper and bury them, or she would tie rocks around them and drift them off into the river. No. The mothers that sent letters asking for updates on their children had no idea that they had been long dead. <laughs> Depressed. This story is so sad. It actually makes me sad. This is my broken face. <laughs> we are broken. We are go- we're just going to sit here and cry for a minute. <laughs> like, I'm laughing, but I'm not yeah, happy at all. At all. I'm so upset. This is our, like... Laughing is our comfort mechanism. Yes, it is. <laughs> it and is. like, if you could just ima- okay, imagine this as she's saying all this stuff, my heart just like broke in half. I just floated to the bottom it's of my so stomach, sad. and now it's burning. <laughs> <laughs> it's burning. Like I was just trying to like describe a feeling of pain. It is. It is. <laughs> it's Sorry. so true. I write poetry, so I have to describe it in weird ways. <laughs> But, like, ah, oh, just, this is tearing my heart up. I know, it's horrible. This, this is why, it out of my chest. this is why I said this is the, one of the most, this is probably one of the worst serial killers I have ever heard of. Like, ever. Ever. <sighs> I have an idea. You can keep talking. Though. Okay. I'm going to grab something. <laughs> on March 30th, 1896, someone working on the river spotted a package of some kind floating down the river. Intrigued, they managed to retrieve it, and inside, they found the bodies of two children. Amelia did not manage to weigh the babies down sufficiently. The police managed to link the material used to suffocate the children to Amelia using forensics, which was in early stages at the time. A detective put the wrapping paper under a microscope and managed to decipher a faintly visible name and address. Thank God. (laughs) That was like a miracle right there. Yeah, especially since it was in the water. I know. The police learned Amelia would flee or fake a mental breakdown if they ever suspected her, so they used a woman as a decoy, hoping she would be able to secure a meeting with Amelia. This would then give them the perfect opportunity to arrest her. On April 3rd, Amelia was waiting for the decoy to come by, but instead, she found detectives waiting on her doorstep. Take that, Amelia. Good. You deserve it. You deserve every second of it. You're a B word. Wait, wait till you see the ending of this. It's just <laughs> bitter freaking sweet, man. I hate her. Me too. She gets what she deserves. Don't worry. The police quickly raided her home where the foul stench of human decomposition hit them upon entry. No human remains were actually found, but there were, uh, but there was other related evidence, including the white tape that was used to strangle the poor infants. Police calculated that in the previous few months alone, at least 20 children had been placed in the care of Amelia. It also appeared that she was in the process of moving to a different part of the country. At a rate, thank God they caught her before she moved across the country. I was like, thank God they caught her before she ran away again. That would have been... Thank (laughs) thank God. Thank you. (laughs) At the rate she was taking in new children, it's theorized that over the decades, she is likely to have killed hundreds. Which it, with, if, oh gosh, I can't talk. Sorry, talking is hard. Talking is hard. (laughs) Which, if true, makes her one of the most, makes her one of the worst killers in history. Yeah, because whenever I looked up her birthday, it said estimated 200 to 400 plus. Yeah. But yeah. there was only six confirmed. Yep. Um, on May 22nd, 1896, she was placed on trial for the murder of three infants, and the jury found her guilty within four minutes. During the trial, 
she tried to save herself by trying to prove she was insane. She was insane. But it was later proved by the authorities that it was just a ploy to save herself from the death sentence. Yeah. You tried it, but it didn't work. You deserve the death sentence. <laughs> exactly. Because you killed 400 like, plus oh, children. I gotta save myself. Oh, Amelia. I'm just, I'm just crazy. Just shut up. And even Okay. Goodbye. Even if you were crazy. <laughs> even if you were crazy. Maybe you still deserve it. Exactly. Even if you were. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> um she then oh yeah she then filled five notebooks with her last and true confession amelia elizabeth dyer was hanged exactly 9 a.m on june 10th 1896 at 57 years old her last words were quote i have nothing to say end quote of course she does of course because you're guilty because you are a piece of fill in the blank (laughs) yeah (laughs) see you next tuesday yeah see you next tuesday (laughs) as a result of amelia's shocking crimes the adoption laws became stricter and before the 20th century began reformers put a pressure on parliaments for new laws that legally held fathers financially accountable which thankfully for the most part stopped this from happening Amelia is thought to be responsible for the deaths of up to 400 children. Wow. I mean, it's it's a sad thing that this happened, but it also started where it, it's holding yeah. the fathers responsible, yep. which they should have been in the first exactly. place. Exactly. Because it takes two to have a child. And the adoption laws were like, they were giving them kids to anybody yeah, pretty yeah. much. Like, you want a kid? <laughs> here you go. Oh, you served. Like, I don't know if you're going to take care of it, but here you go. You served half your life in jail. Here's a kid. <laughs> But you're not holding the father responsible <laughs> at all. Exactly. It's all on the women. So this was an awful, awful story. Amelia is probably, without a doubt, one of the worst yeah, I... serial killers ever to have existed. Hate her with a burning passion. Hate, always hate, will. Hate, hate. <laughs> Even though she is dead, I will always hate her. I, I don't like her. <laughs> And if she ever gets reincarnated, yep. I hope you die. Yep. <laughs> I hope the same thing. Well, no, not the same thing, but I hope, you know, <laughs> you end up on the death sentence if you try it again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's what I mean. If you try it again, you're just going to get caught exactly. right away and then you're going to be put in jail. I really hope that baby suffer. farming isn't a thing anymore. I don't think it is, but I just really hope it's not. Just <laughs> I hope it's not. But this world is so crazy. You never even know. It's crazy, and there's a lot of human trafficking. Yeah. So I guess you could say human trafficking is the same thing. Yeah. It's just on a different level. Don't try that at home, or else don't you'll... do that ever. Exactly. <laughs> don't ever. Don't try that anywhere. No, but I, while she, while you were talking, I grabbed my book. I was trying to see if she was in here. Mm-hmm. I don't think she is. Because I have this. Uh, serial killer book mm-hmm. i don't see have you ever heard of i think in my next cover oh, i just I wonder to... if my next if my next case is gonna be in here dorothea Poole. you know who that is the killer grammy oh my this was this i have to cover Yeah, I think I might do that. My next one, I've been saying this for a while now. My next one is going to be the um one of the guys that influenced uh Silence of the or Buffalo Bill. Well, yeah. I don't know why I was saying Silence of the Lambs. <laughs> or is that that movie that it's from? I don't know. I don't know that movie too well. Either, but it he influenced Buffalo Bill. Yeah. And he was from Pennsylvania. Oh lord. But I was just, I don't know, I just, this book, I bought this, mm-hmm. like, forever ago for ideas. And I do have, like, ones, like, marked mm-hmm. off. That's a good idea. Like, that I've had marked off for a while. But, wow, okay, both of these cases today were absolutely awful. Yeah, they were 
And now I'm like, I'm so ready for Five Nights at Freddy's. Yeah, we're going <laughs> to unwind and watch some killer <laughs> animatronics. <laughs> yeah, because that's a way to make exactly. this better. <laughs> what a way to unwind. <laughs> oh, my. There's nothing wrong with us. Exactly. It's what's wrong with all the killers. Exactly. What is wrong with you? Not you guys, but what is wrong with them? <laughs> yeah, and there's nothing wrong with us. Yeah, we're no. fine. We're fine. Just a little weird, but that's a good thing. So <laughs> <laughs> it's okay to be weird. Exactly. Embrace your weirdness. Do it because life is short. Exactly. So be yourself. And the people who love you love you. And the people that don't, goodbye. But be yourself, but like also be nice. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> be nice. Don't be crazy. Don't be crazy. Don't do what any of don't the do crazy that we things. talk about do. <laughs> exactly. Do not. <laughs> okay. So, we're at the part where we say our social medias. So, go follow us on, on Facebook. <laughs> at Facebook or whatever. <laughs> go follow us on Facebook. <laughs> at Dreadfully Twisted Podcast, right? Instagram, the same. Instagram, the same thing. Dreadfully Twisted Podcast. Uh, TikTok, the same thing. Dreadfully Twisted Podcast. Our email is dreadfullytwistedpodcast at gmail.com if you want to write in your stories about the paranormal, spooky, or true crimey stuff. Yeah, send us in some suggestions. We will definitely cover them. And you can listen anywhere, or almost anywhere you listen to podcasts. You can listen to us on Spotify, YouTube, um, Pandora Radio, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, and then, like there's a couple weird ones like called Listen Notes and Podcast Index. Um... Go to our Patreon if you want to see videos and stuff. I know we haven't posted on there yeah, yet. Yeah, we haven't really got that up and running um, yet, but, but we will. But if you do follow us on there and subscribe, um, we will have extra content for you. And we will have stickers and like freebies that you get to Merchandise. take. Get to have for free. And then you get to see like exclusive content and yes, go to some haunted places. Yeah, and you never know, maybe we'll record videos. Yeah. of us because how earlier she made a face. Yeah, <laughs> it yep, nice exactly. To see like our reactions. You guys would probably laugh like yeah. us. <laughs> um, so go there, and that is www.patreon.com backslash dreadfully twisted podcast, and then you can go to our Reddit to submit stories and and or suggestions um at uh it's r backslash dreadfully twisted pod on there so go ahead and like put your stories and stuff in there so we can read them and maybe like read them on the podcast for other people to hear because <laughs> i feel like that would be really fun yes it would and we will be back next week yes we, we will. are recording one yes it will either be Tuesday, Wednesday, or Friday. <laughs> yes. We promise. We will promise. not let you down. <laughs> I will get my butt into gear and I'll do my next case. <laughs> I'm going to get started on mine early. <laughs> yes. Yes. I have to. Re- like, I have mine. Like, I have two stories started. Yeah. It's just really quick. We decorated for Halloween at my work <laughs> and we did Wizard of Oz. So I made like three signs Marble. and we did so much work like at the office and we put up so many decorations so that's what i've been working on the last like two weeks it was literally so cute and she then, did so much and they were all so nice yeah it was it was fun and then they took it all down on the next day and i was sad <laughs> i was like no i'm not ready i wanted this to be up Can we still? keep it up forever <laughs> <laughs> so much work went into it no. but um but it was fun and then i got to bring my dog in to work so oh yes he made the best toto yes he did so, and that so was cute. Glinda the Good Witch for, for Halloween. You look so cute. But that's what, that's what we were I was doing for the last two weeks. And then now with my crafting business, I'm getting a lot of orders for Christmas. So I'm like, <laughs> and I still work full time. So <laughs> life gets in the way, yeah. but I am promising you now. Yes. No more of that. And we're going to record every week. <laughs> we will be there. Or be square. Judge Hammer. <laughs> Judge Hammer. <laughs> <laughs> this is another reason why we need to record some videos. For that. Yeah. <laughs> we're pretty funny, honestly. If you guys would have seen that, you probably would have been laughing with us. <laughs> Although you probably heard my table shake. <laughs> <laughs> you probably what's going on. <laughs> okay, now that we talked for like 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you guys next week. Uh, be kind to each other. Check on your friends. Spread positivity. Be nice. And we love you and we'll see you next week. Love you. Bye. Bye.